Hello. When I was new to analog design, I used to be constantly surprised how some people could tell the number of pulls and zeros in a circuit even without solving it. Over the years, I have learned some tools and tricks to tell the number of pulls and zero myself. So in this video, I'm going to share some of these techniques. So let's begin by considering the simplest possible RC circuit. This is a simple low pass filter and we know that it has one pool. But how do we know that it has one pool? A very useful rule of thumb to remember is that number of pole in a circuit is equal to number of energy storage elements it contains. There are two types of energy storage elements, capacitors and inductors. So this circuit contains only one capacitor. So there should be only one pool. Now this rule comes with a caveat which we will see in a few minutes but it's a very good very useful rule for an initial estimate of number of poles in a circuit. So count the number of capacitors and inductors and that will be roughly the number of poles in that circuit. Okay how about zeros in the circuits? So zeros are the conditions which make output well zero. So in the circuit such as this where there are two branches, there are two ways the output can be zero. First way is that the impedance of the branch which connects output to the ground becomes zero. So it is like shorting the output to the ground. And the second way is that the impedance of the branch which connects input to the output becomes infinite. So this is another way of saying that we are cutting the output from the input. Coming to this particular circuit. The branch which connects input to the output contains a resistance. And since resistance has a fixed impedance, the impedance of this branch cannot go infinity. Impedance of the other branch is given by 1 over j omega c. This impedance reduces with increase in the frequency. And at infinite frequency, the impedance becomes zero. So there is indeed a zero, but at infinite frequency which is in fact another way of saying that there is no zero in this circuit. I should mention here that the frequencies that we are talking here are complex frequencies. And that means that you are very unlikely to see the output go actually zero in a simulation or on an oscilloscope. Now things become much more interesting if we swap the position of R's and C's. In interviews, I often ask people to draw the frequency response of this circuit and I usually get very weird responses. So people draw all kind of things like this or like this or like this, but very few people get it right. But if we know how to find the poles and zero by inspection, we can easily solve this circuit. So let's first consider pool in this circuit. So we said that the number of poles in a circuit is equal to number of energy storage elements and we haven't changed our energy storage element in this circuit. We still have that same capacitor but just connected differently. So this circuit also has just one pole and in fact at exactly the same location as the previous circuit. In fact as a general rule, poles of the circuit does not depend on where we are injecting the input or from where we are taking the output. It just depends on the topology or the network of the circuit. Coming to the zeros, we notice that the path which connects output to the ground now contains a resistance, so we cannot change this impedance. But talking about a path which connects input to the output now contains a capacitor which has a frequency dependent impedance. And in order to create a zero, this impedance needs to be infinity. And guess what? At zero frequency or DC frequency, capacitor acts as open circuit. That means it has infinite impedance. So we do have a zero in this circuit and this zero is at zero frequency or at DC. So now that we know the poles and zeros of this circuit, we can draw the frequency response. So if we draw frequency in the linear scale and the magnitude or gain in the absolute scale, then the magnitude starts from the zero and then rises to one. And if we draw the Bode plot where frequency is in log axis and magnitude or gain is in dB, so we don't have a zero frequency in this log axis. Zero or DC in the log axis is at minus infinity. So magnitude increases from minus infinity slowly at 20 dB per decade 
and when it encounters a pole it settles to 0 dB. So this is a simple first order high pass filter response. Now here is an important point to make about the gain of passive RLC circuit. The gain in these circuits does not go beyond 1 or unity or 0 dB. Now resonance frequencies are important exception where gain can indeed become more than 1 for a narrow band of frequencies. But in general RLC circuit cannot provide above unity gain for broad range of frequencies. Okay, now let's make things little more complicated by adding more elements. So here now we have a cascade of RC circuit. So now since we have two energy storage elements in form of capacitor C1 and C2, this is a two pole system. Number of poles in fact also decide order of the system. So it is a second order system. The location of the pole depend on the values of register and capacitors and the precise formula for the location of poles are very complicated. We can make approximate calculation if we know that some parameters are much larger than the other parameters. There are certain techniques to estimate the approximate location of poles but we will not discuss those techniques in this video. Coming to the zeros, like the first order low pass RC circuit, this circuit also doesn't have any zeros in the finite frequency range. But if we take output at a different node, things become more interesting. So let's redraw the same circuit for a better visualization. So we have same circuit again, but output is taken at a different node. Since we haven't changed anything in the circuit parameter or the topology of the circuit, this circuit also has two poles which are located exactly at the same location as the previous circuit. But unlike previous circuit, we now have two branches which connect output to the ground. We already know that the branch containing only capacitor will give us a zero at infinite frequency. So let's consider the other branch. Impedance of this branch is the series combination of resistor and impedance of capacitor. So in this equation S is the complex frequency. Now this branch will create a zero if impedance of this branch becomes zero. And this gives us a zero location. So we see here again that the zero depends on where we are taking the output. Now let's make another modification in this circuit. So this circuit is same as our second circuit except we have added a capacitor C3 in parallel with resistor R1. So from whatever we have learned so far, we would say, okay, so we have another capacitor, in total three capacitor, so there should be three poles in this circuit. But here is the caveat that I mentioned earlier. Number of pole do not just depend on number of energy storage elements. Number of poles are equal to number of independent energy storage elements. An energy storage element is independent if we can freely assign a state variable to it. In case of capacitors, the state variable is voltage. If we look at the capacitor combination of C3 and C1 and if we assign a voltage across C1, we see that voltage across C3 is simply V in minus that voltage. On the other hand, if we assign a voltage to C3 first, then the voltage across C1 is now V in minus that voltage. In other words, we cannot freely assign voltages to both C1 and C3. So even though we have three energy storage elements in this circuit, only two are independent. Hence, there are only two poles. Number of poles can also be thought of as degree of freedom in a circuit. So even though we have added a capacitor in this circuit, we haven't increased the degree of freedom in the circuit. And that is because capacitors C3 and C1 together with voltage input and ground make a very tightly coupled KVL loop which cannot be violated. Okay, so we still have two poles in this circuit. How about number of zeros? So we know that there will be one zero because of this branch. But we now also have this capacitor in input to output path. And if we put the impedance of this combined path to infinity, we have possibility of another zero. And indeed we have another zero here. 
In fact, if we have two paths from input to output and if one of the path is frequency dependent, then we'll have a zero. Also note that number of zero is not immediately evident in a circuit, but once we work through the circuit, the zero location is easy to find out. On the other hand, we can very quickly make out the number of poles, but the pole location is little difficult to find. So here we have three circuits, all having same number of poles, but different number of zeros. So we have circuit with two poles and no zeros. We have circuit with two pole and one zero, and we have circuit with two poles and two zeros. So now this begs a question, can we have a circuit with two pole and three zeros? We can very easily show that a circuit with two poles and three zeros is simply not possible. If we draw a body plot of the system, then a pole causes the gain to roll off by extra 20 dB per decade. A zero also causes slope of the gain plot to change by 20 dB per decade, but in the increasing direction. So if we plot the Bode plot of a hypothetical system containing two poles and three zero, it may look something like this. So we have poles which create the negative slope of the gain plot and then zeros which either cancel that negative slope or cause a positive slope in the gain plot. Or we can have a different sequence of poles and zeros where zeros come first and then pole. So here we have zero first and then two poles and then two zeros or we can have any other sequence. So there will be one common feature for all these curves that once all the singularities that is poles and zeros have occurred, the final slope will be a plus 20 dB per decade increasing slope in the gain plot. And this plot implies that we will have very high gain at very high frequencies and in fact at infinite frequency we can even have infinite gain. But we know that it's very difficult for an RC circuit to achieve a gain more than one, let alone very high or infinity gain. As a matter of fact, even for the active circuit, we cannot have gain increasing with the frequency indefinitely. So what it tells us is that number of zeros cannot be more than number of poles in any circuit. So let's consider a final example where we use this fact to calculate the number of zeros in the circuit. Okay. So take a look at this circuit and try to estimate the number of poles. So we see there are four energy storage elements, two capacitors and two inductor. So our first estimate should be there are four poles in this circuit. But then our next question should be are these four energy storage elements independent? So we observe that each energy storage element has a resistance in series with it. And that means we can freely assign voltages to the capacitors. Also, we can freely assign currents to the inductors without breaking any KVL or KCL rule. So we can say that energy storage elements are indeed independent. So there will be four poles in this circuit. To find the number of zeros, we can set the impedances to either zero or infinity. But there is another way to estimate number of zeros if we know the number of poles. For that, consider the frequency response of the circuit at extremely high frequencies where inductors are open and capacitors are short. So at very high frequency, this circuit looks as a simple resistor divider. And output voltage is given by this resistor divider equation. So at very high frequency, gain of this circuit is constant, that is it doesn't change with the frequency. This can only happen if the gain roll-off caused by all the four poles are cancelled by four zeros. So by this reasoning, there will be four zeros in this circuit. This reasoning also works if the gain at very high frequency is not a constant. For example, if we assume that R3 is zero, then at very high frequency, this circuit would look like a first order RC circuit. And that means at very high frequency, this circuit has a first order roll off that is minus 20 dB per decade. And this can only happen if out of four poles, three are cancelled by zeros and only one is remaining. So in this case, there are only three zeros in the circuit. In fact, it's a good circuit to play with. You can add or remove more elements to see if you can figure out the number of poles and zeros by this reasoning. Okay, now to summarize, 
Number of poles in a circuit is equal to number of independent energy storage elements in that circuit. Zeros are the conditions which make output go zero. This can be done by making appropriate branch impedance zero or infinity. Zeros are also cost if there are two paths from input to the output and one of the path is frequency dependent. Gain of a circuit cannot increase indefinitely with the frequency. And that in fact implies that number of zeros cannot be more than number of poles. There is another rule worth remembering which I have not talked about in this video is poles and zero caused by passive RLC circuits are always in the left hand plane. So in this video I have tried to share some of the tricks and techniques to find the number of poles and zeros in a circuit just by inspection. I have only talked about passive circuit in this video but the many of the insights are valid for active circuit as well. I have left out many important details and in fact many related concepts which hopefully I will talk about in future videos. I hope you find this video helpful. So share your comments below and thanks for watching.